When we talk about the computer network, what is the first thing coming into our mind? The cables. Even though wireless networks are very popular nowadays, we cannot imagine a network without the cables. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about the Ethernet cables or the copper cables. Welcome to CCNA 203.1 Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions Chapter Number 31 Ethernet Cable or the Copper Cable In this chapter, we will understand about the Ethernet cables and how to use it to connect network devices. And also, we will discuss about different wiring methods and standards of Ethernet cables. So, what is an Ethernet cable? Before we talk about the Ethernet cable, first we have to understand the concept of Ethernet. What is an Ethernet? Ethernet is a way of connecting computers and other network devices in a physical space. This is often referred to as a local area network or LAN. The idea of Ethernet network is that computer and other devices can share the file, information and data with each other efficiently. Ethernet was released in 1980. By 1982, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer, that is called IEEE, standardized the format so that all networking and computer devices would use the same port. So basically, IEEE designed a port that is called the Ethernet port. They consider this is as a standard networking port in between network devices. IEEE created a written guide to Ethernet standards and worked to improve this standard as a technology advances. All the network device manufacturer must adhere to this strictly standard to ensure the quality and safety of the network. So any network device manufacturer, if they want to allow to connect their devices into a network, they must include the Ethernet port in their devices. Nowadays the Ethernet ports are available in most of the networking devices like PC, servers, telephone, access point, printers, router, switches, etc. So now we have the answer for our question, what is an Ethernet cable? The Ethernet cables are the cable that used to connect the Ethernet port to make the network connection between the devices. Ethernet cable contain 8 electrical wires with different colors and these electrical wires are twisted together to avoid the electromagnetic radiation so that it will not affect the data transferring through the cable and these 8 electrical wires are usually fit into a connector which is called RJ45 which has 8 connecting plates inside and this process of fixing this electrical cable into RJ45 connector it is called crimping and it is doing with the help of a tool called crimping tool. Now let's see how to crimp an Ethernet cable into an RJ45 connector. For that we have to take the cable and by using the crimping tool we need to sleeve off the plastic external cover then arrange the 8 wire properly in uniform length and then attach the RJ45 connector then crimp it using the crimping tool. And finally we get our Ethernet cable in this format with the proper crimping at both the side. Ethernet cables are available in different format so let's see what is the history of Ethernet cables. You can see the different types of Ethernet cable in the screen which was introduced in different different years which is starting from the CAT1 cable to CAT8.2 cable. The first cable was CAT1 cable with 1 Mbps speed which is introduced in 1983. Then in 1987 the CAT2 came up with 4 Mbps speed. Then CAT3 came in 1991 with 10 Mbps speed. Then CAT4 introduced in 1993 with 16 Mbps speed. Then CAT5 introduced with 100 Mbps speed in 1995. So before the CAT5, we were using the network with less than 100 Mbps speed. When the CAT5 introduced, the 100 Mbps speed was achieved in this network. So the cable from CAT1, CAT2, CAT3 and CAT4 are all type of cables which has less than 100 Mbps speed. Nowadays, we are not using this kind of cable anywhere in this world. We are using minimum a CAT5 cable with 100 Mbps speed. And nowadays, this CAT5 cable also out of the world. We can see it in older building or old networks only. The reason is 
Nobody is using the 100 Mbps network nowadays. Then we have the updated version of CAT5 cable which is CAT5 E cable which is providing 1 Gbps speed and it is introduced in 2001. Nowadays most of the network switches and network devices has minimum 1 Gbps speed supporting Ethernet port. So we can say that this is the common cables that we are using nowadays and after cat 5e we have cat 6 which is also providing 1 gbps speed that is introduced in 2002 so nowadays these are the two commonly using standards in the network because most of the end user devices and switch support 1 gbps and then we go to the next level of cable standard which is cat 6a which support 10 gbps it is introduced in 2008 then we have cat 7 which is also support 10 Gbps introduced in 2010. Then CAT 7A which is also support 10 Gbps introduced in 2013. Then CAT 8.1 which has 25 Gbps speed introduced in 2016. Then CAT 8.2 which has 40 Gbps speed which is introduced in 2018. So the last five type of cables that is mainly using to provide the uplink between the network switches for the fast network transmission. These are not commonly using for the end user devices because it is not common to have a end user device that support 10 Gbps network speed. Commonly it is available maximum 1 Gbps unless that is an industrial device. So basically saying the cable standards from CAT 6A to CAT 8.2 cables are using for the industrial purpose or using inside the data center to provide the network connectivity between the switches and routers not commonly using for the end user device connection. Here all the higher versions of cables are backward compatible. That means if we have a computer here with 100 Mbps speed and we have a network switch here which has a 100 Mbps speed port then which cable is suitable for this connection. We can connect the CAT5 cable because it has a 100 Mbps speed. So when we connect the CAT5 cable in between the computer and the switch, both the device can transmit the data of 100 Mbps. But here can we connect the CAT5e cable with 1 Gbps speed? Of course we can connect the CAT5e cable but the problem is even the CAT5e cable has the capacity of 1 Gbps speed, the network speed between the computer and the switch will be still 100 Mbps because the device has the capacity to transfer 100 Mbps only. So even if you connect the higher version of cable like CAT 5e, CAT 6, it doesn't matter what is the cable speed, it is matter what is the capacity of the device. Here it is 100 Mbps speed for both the PC and the switch. So it can only manage 100 Mbps data. Now imagine this PC has 10 GB speed and the network switch has 10 GB interface. In that situation, we can use the CAT 6A cable because it can provide 10 Gbps speed. Some kind of higher end data center switches has 10 Gbps speed interface. So this cable is mainly using inside the data center. And when we consider the normal IDF switch, even its all interfaces are with 1 Gbps speed, its uplink ports are available with 10 Gbps speed. So in that case, we can use this CAT 6A cable to provide the uplink between multiple switches. That means if we have multiple switches, this uplink port we can connect by using the CAT 6A cable so that the network transmission speed between two switches are 10 Gbps. And some switches has 40 Gbps speed interface. So in that case, we can use this CAT 8.2 cables to provide the uplink between them so that they get 40 Gbps speed. So basically saying the higher standards cables are backward compatible with the lower speed network. But the problem is the cost of the cable. The higher standards cables are very costly. So when we use it in the lower speed network, we don't get any extra benefit. So it is better to choose the right cable for the right network always. Another point is when we use the Ethernet cable, the maximum allowed distance is 100 meter. So when you do the Ethernet cabling, please make sure that the cable length is not exceeded more than 100 meter. If you use the cable more than 100 meter, then that can cause the network slowness. Now let's discuss about the wiring standards for Ethernet cables. There are two types of wiring standards used in Ethernet cables. They are, one is T568A and the second one is T568B. 
So what is the difference between these two standards? One is the A standard and another one is B standard. What is the difference in between? The difference is in the coloring standard of the wiring. If you see the picture T568A following the color code starting from green white, green, orange white, blue, blue white, orange, brown white and brown. On the other hand T568B following the color code starting from orange white, orange, green white, blue, blue white, green, brown white and brown. These are the only difference in the color code of wiring. Some people use T568A and some people use T568B. Majority of the people are using B standard that is 568B. Now let's see what is a straight through cable. If we use the same standard of wiring at both end of the cable then it is called straight through cable. For example you can have both say T568A or T568B. In simply saying if one side of the cable is T568A then the other side also should be the same T568A then only we can call it is as a straight through cable or else if we are using the T568B standard then both side should be the same. So this is the concept of straight through cable. Now let's see what is crossover cable. If we are using the different wiring standard at both end of the cable then it is called a crossover cable. For example if one side we are using T568A then the other side should be T568B or vice versa. We cannot use the same wiring standard at both end. If we use like that then it is called straight through cable. So the difference between straight through and crossover is in straight through cable both side using the same wiring standard. In crossover cable different wiring standards are used at both end of the cable. Now let's see what is the uses of straight through cable and crossover cable. The straight through cables are using to connect dissimilar devices. For example if you want to connect a switch into a router or a PC into a switch, a server into a switch or a PC into a hub or server into hub we are using the straight through cable. On the other hand the crossover cables are using to connect similar devices. For example if you want to connect a switch into another switch we have to use the crossover cable. A hub into a hub we have to use the crossover cable. A router into a router we have to use the crossover cable. What if we want to connect a PC into another PC directly? Then we should use the crossover cable. Now this is the past. Nowadays most of the network devices are intelligent enough to understand which device connected to other end and they can negotiate the connectivity. So that means for the new networking devices we don't want to use the crossover cable anymore. We can connect the straight through cable so the device is intelligent enough to identify the other device and make the connection in between. Now let's see how the ethernet cabling can be done for an office. This is a floor map of an office which has the user desk and one IT room. And we have to connect the computers into this user desk and provide the network connectivity. For that we have to do the cabling between the computers and the IT rack. For that we have to use the ethernet cable from the location of each computers into the IT room. And these cables are called spool cable or plenum cable. Because these cables are passing through above the ceiling or below the floor. Depends on the architecture of the office. Now we can see that all spool cables has reached near to the computer. Now how it is going to connect to the computer? For that we have to install the network socket at each computer's location and all of this cable will be terminated to that network socket. And after that we use the short ethernet cable which is called the patch cable and connect this PC into this network socket. These patch cables are mainly using at the user side or inside the IT room for patching. That's why it's called patch cable. Now we know that at one side of the cable near to the computers we have connected network socket and it is connected to the computer. Now what about the other end? The other end is going to the IT room into the IT rack. So the other end we can directly connect to the network switch which is available inside the IT rack so that all the PC can get the network connection. But the disadvantage of this method is when we directly connect this cable into the switch 
we are losing the flexibility to expand the network or relocation of the switch moreover it is very difficult to troubleshoot when there is a cable is faulty or disconnected because it is very difficult to identify from the switch port which cable is coming from which pc so the standard method is instead of going all the cable into the network switch we can terminate those cable into a patch panel so all the ethernet cables coming from the pc side we can attach at the back of the patch panel like this then use the patch cable and patch between the patch panel and the switch the patch panel has a facility to provide the numbering system for each cable so we can identify which cable is going to which pc so if there is any network issue occurred because of the cable problem we can identify the pc and the cable easily and we can only check those cable the troubleshooting is very easy and in future if you want to relocate the network switch into another rack or another location we can simply remove the short patch cable then relocate the switch then we can connect the long patch cable from this patch panel into that switch so it is not necessary to recabling everything only we can relocate the switch and replace all the patch cable so the connectivity will be there as it is so this is the one of the benefit of patch panel what is the difference of doing cabling with and without the patch panel so you can see the left side is without patch panel all the cables coming from the pc it is directly connected to the switch and there is no way to identify the cable and troubleshoot the issue on the other hand when we use the patch panel the cables from each pc is going to the patch panel and it is numbered properly it is labeled properly so that we can identify better and troubleshoot the issue easily in this chapter we got a good understanding about the ethernet cables and how to use it to connect network devices also we have discussed about different wiring methods and standards of ethernet cables thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel for more videos enhance your skills using irash academy